Welcome back to Wrenches in Motion, where if it ain't broke, I ain't buying it. And today, well I didn't buy it, but it's broke. Let's take a look at the 1993 Ford Ranger. Um, just got this home. And um, it's got check engine light. Kind of runs like garbage. Um, and there's the, the biggest thing, I think, is there's a fuel leak. So I know with the fuel leak if you don't have enough fuel pressure your truck's gonna run like junk so um, time to unstrap it get it off the trailer and take a look and see what we got well not we got but see what we're working with um, I haven't even popped the hood I don't know if it's a six cylinder if it's a four cylinder I don't know if it's an automatic or a stick um, he drove it up on the trailer. I guided him. It kind of sounded like a stick, but I don't know for sure. So that being said, let's unstrap it, drop the ramps, get this thing down and up on a different set of ramps. Or maybe I'll just leave it on those ramps there. No, I can't. I'll put it up on ramps and then uh, crawl under it while it's running and see if I can mark what fuel line's bad so we can fix that first. Okay, so we're ready to pull it up on the ramps, and um, my guess, since I drove it over here, I know it's an automatic. I'm going to guess it's the four-cylinder 2.3 liter. And let me find the stick. Sorry to have you point to the sky. And it is, what is it? I don't know these early Rangers all that well. Oh, three liter. Okay, I've got some three liter parts. Um, I don't know what that is looking all wide open like that. Uh, but anyway, this thing runs like junk. So let me get it up on ramps and I'll show you where the where I'm pretty sure the leak is coming from there's the check engine light I don't know if you can feel how this thing's vibrating like crazy come on Okay. Woo. All right, I think I know. So you're gonna come under here with me. It looks like there's a hole in one of the fuel lines. I tried to mark it. Oh, yeah. Not too hard to see where it's leaking fuel. Yeah, that's exactly the spot I thought it was. Okay, now that I've got it up on the ramps, um, I've got the, I was gonna say I have the fuel line marked, but I don't because the zip tie went around two different ones. So I'm gonna go under there, zip tie the right one, and then I'm gonna trace it. And I believe that it's one that's coming from the fuel tank or the fuel sender or something like that, which means I gotta take this bed off. Not the first bed I've taken off. Um, won't be the last bed I take off. So wish me luck on that. I'm um, gonna take the toolbox out first. Hopefully that comes right out. And then lift this bed out. And see if I can't go find a line. So we're back on the Ranger. We're gonna pull some codes. Um, down here by the fuse box, you'll see this little cover that says EEC test. You take these two connectors out of it, and we're going to jump her from the gray one to the top right, right there with a piece of wire. And then go turn the ignition on and see what kind of codes we get. Okay, wire's in place. Nothing fancy here. OBD1. Uh, let's watch and see what we get. We're not going to get anything right now. 
Okay, here we go. I'm going to have to go back through this video because I don't, I didn't count these lights, these flashes. Fifty one. Eight. Fifty-three. Nine. Fifty-one. Three. Okay, so I don't know. Let's go research, see what these are. Well, I don't remember where we left off. So we got the tailgate, we got the bed box, and we got all the bed bolts out. They actually came right out. Um, so next is going to be an electrical plug right here. We're going to disconnect that. And over here, for the filler neck, we got these three seven millimeters. We're gonna disconnect those, take the gas cap off, and then we should be able to lift the bed back. Of course, I gotta do this by myself, so it's gonna suck, but I've done it before, and uh, I'll do it again. And also, I'm gonna take these bricks out of here, make it a little bit lighter. I did clean some of the bed out, because it stunk and it was full of crap. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the bricks out, sweep all the dirt out of there, and then I can pull the bed back because I did go to favorite junkyard and I pulled the gas lines. Um, so once I get the bed off, I'm gonna disconnect the straps, drop the gas tank. Hopefully there's not a lot of gas in it, I think. I think it was less than half. I hope so. It's showing full. I gotta hope it's not full. Um, and then I can work on replacing these lines. So there's a wire attached um, to the bed. And it's got a butt connector here. I think it's providing lights for the trailer. So we're just gonna cut them and we'll solder that. And pull this wire back so we can get this bed off. Something else I saw already is, how do you see it way in there? The fuel filler. Oh, it looks like it just came off. I thought it was broke. Okay, we might be good. Well, we got the bed off to where we can get to it. Um, these two lines, this is supposed to be your vent, which is not connected. So we're going to connect that again. I don't know where that hose went, but down in there is a, a bracket and underneath I think there's there's three more plastic brackets that hold everything together so I'm gonna crawl under there uh, I'm gonna mark these hoses where they go because I think on this end when I bring these over they're gonna come up like this Obviously, the straight one's going to go there, the 90 degree is going to go there, and the vent's going to go back here. So what we're going to have to do right now is we're going to have to drop the tank after we get those other brackets and the, and the hoses loose. 
drop the tank so we can finish pulling these out and then snake these in. Uh, something else I wanted to show you. This happens on all these Ford Rangers after a while. Uh, you see the filler neck, how it's all cracked. And then at the bottom, it's all split right there. Uh, what that's going to do is when you're filling up, it's going to spill gas all over the place. And as you're driving down the road, you step on the brakes, the gas sloshes around. It's going to splash out, and you're constantly going to be reminded that you've got a fuel leak. So we're going to order a new one of these and replace that too. Okay, so where are we after day one? Well, we did get the tank out. Uh, we got the new lines run. <clears throat> They're clipped in the front. All we got to do is clip them in the back when we put the tank back in. Um, I was trying to figure out how I got the tank out so easy in the junkyard, and it was so difficult to get out here. And then I looked down, and it's like, oh yeah, there's a rear end there, and there's a drive shaft there. Those were both missing out at the junkyard, so as soon as I got the gas tank loose, it kind of slid back and just fell right out. Here, not so much. There's quite a few things to work around. So we've got to put the strap back up there and then slide the tank in. Uh, the other strap's laying down there, so we got to put that back in. And that's going to wait till tomorrow because I'm tired. I need a shower and I need to go to bed early. So that's where we're at for today. And I don't know if I'm going to try to fix that or not, but uh, first things first, let's uh, get this tank in tomorrow, get the lines up, hooked back up, and see if we can start it and see how it acts. Oh, no, we're not going to be able to do that because I've got to order this, and that's going to take a few days to get here. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's put the tank back in tomorrow, and, uh, and it will stop there. Okay, let's see if I can get this done before the camera fogs up again. It's hot out here. Um, the gas tank is back in. Um, the supply return vent and the electrics hooked up. He said the gas gauge was something wrong with that. So we're gonna test the gas gauge, uh, see if the float is full of gas. They do tend to crack um, or get holes in them and then they fill with gas and then they just sink. So that's quite the opposite of float. Um, you'll see the bed is to almost totally off. Um, we had to lift it up with the skid loader so I could get enough room underneath it to put the gas tank up. All the straps are on. Um, the gas lines are run. Obviously, I think I said that already in, a, in, in an earlier portion. The filler neck is supposed to be here today, but it's also supposed to be delivered by USPS, which means it's not coming today. And I've got a bunch of travel for work coming up, so this thing may end up just sitting just like this. Um, probably for about three weeks, because I'm not going to be able to get to it. Um, Kenny the pilot, battery's totally dead, so still got the parasitic draw. And mm, look at these nice clean arms. This is, uh, this is what you get for rolling around in the dirt. So I've got two cars in the carport right now. There's a car in the garage, so... I don't have anywhere else to, to work except for right here. 200, wow, well, open, push it down. Oh, wow, that thing is, this thing is shot, this lever here. It's almost like it, it quits making contact. I don't know if it's supposed to move like that. I know it should move up and down, or I know it should go this way, but I think that's just total garbage. Look how far that thing's moving. If you can't, yeah. That's even pulling the, I think that's pulling the, con it is, it's pulling the contact off. Um, let me see if I can get you in there. Maybe not, maybe from this side. Sorry about the camera work. Um, yeah, it's pulling that connector, it's pulling the contact right off. Well, no wonder his gas gauge is acting all funky. Okay, so this is an Airtex E2078S. I don't know when it's been replaced. It looks fairly new. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an issue. Okay, so we got a new fuel pump. And we notice that this, this is loose on this one too. So, okay. 
Let's set our meter to the ohm scale. And we see this nice and solid, 14. As we move it up, the resistance should change, and there it goes. Look at that. All right, we're all the way to the top, all the way full. 161 ohms. You can play with it. It doesn't move at all. Bring it back down. Our scale. All right, this is going to work. Let's put this fuel pump in. Sorry about the abrupt ending to the video. Um, for some reason, I, I stopped recording what I was doing. Uh, it took me a little bit to realize that the codes that it was flashing were three-digit codes. Um, one was said that pretty much the ECU was dead, which it wasn't because obviously it ran. Um, the second code was for the coolant sensor, so I replaced that. Um, <clears throat> we put the fuel pump in, fuel gauge works, the uh, gas lines don't leak, and what else did we do? Oh, we replaced the, the filler neck, and I filled it up with gas, and it, it flowed gas in there like crazy. Um, on those Rangers, those fuel filler necks, not only do they split and crack after time and leak, but a lot of times the flap in there will quit working, and it's really hard to get gas in it. So the easiest thing to do is just replace them. Uh, they're like 50 bucks. And that is it for the video. Um, he's happy with it. He's been driving it around. And um, I think that's it. So Ranger's done and gone. And I will talk to you guys next time.